What's up, my beautiful people? Iggy here with Foutech Unlimited. I wanted to show you today how to add a threaded barrel to a split. There's a couple ways to do it, but this is what I have in shop. This is how I'm going to do it, and you can do it too. You can use any sort of pipe you want. You can use wood dowels, PVC, or you can do what I'm going to do, and you could use a copper pipe that I cut out of my wall. Mm -hmm. I'm about to do a job for someone, and this job, or this holster, has a threaded barrel. Now, this form, which is a um, pale horse concealment form, it is for the 509 uh, Tactical, um, actually 509 Compact, but they don't take in consideration, well, they do, technically, this is the threaded barrel, but he wants it covered, at least I'm going to assume he wants it covered, so we're going to make it covered. Now... I have a half inch diameter steel, or not steel, sorry, copper pipe that was apparently made in Canada. And I'm going to cut it and make it work because I don't have a dowel this size and I don't feel like going to Home Depot. So I'm going to extend it to the edge. And I also got a new tool and I wanted to show you that new tool. I've always wanted one. And I couldn't pass up the uh, the price on it, but I got a battery-operated cutoff wheel. And I figured it'd come in with the hot rods I build, so yeah. But I'm going to go ahead, cut this, and be good. Let me start off saying before I cut this that, yes, I know I can do this with a pipe cutter. I have 10, 20 pipe cutters. But I got a new tool, so I want to try it. But what we're going to do in the long run is we're actually going to cut this in half. So before I go ahead and cut it off, it'll be a lot easier to just cut it in half. So that we are going to do. There's that. Then we'll cut... Perissimo. I'm just going to clean it up just a little bit. Just take the sharp edges off. Hey, what do you know? Bada bing. Just lined it up. Right there. And right there. Cool. And then, just so it doesn't move while being pressed. Going to just do this. Now you will see tape lines on the inside of the kydex, you will not see them on the outside. And I'm not going to have the tape overlap because you will see that also. If you already haven't figured it out, heat presses, they're all different. This is an Amazon special. It came with like five or six different attachments due to sublimation on plates, hats, uh, mugs, and so on. What I suggest doing is, this is all my scrap right here. So take a piece of scrap, throw it in here. And you want 
to set your preferences to where it'll come out between 360 degrees and 380 degrees because I have found that is the ideal temperature when I'm running a 12 CFM pump. So uh, I have mine set up to 410 degrees at uh, 110 seconds. And when this pops out, it comes out at 368, 370 in that area. So that's what you want to do. Fiddle with your press, try and figure it out, but don't assume that my settings are going to be the same as your settings because it probably won't be. So take that in consideration, do with that info with what you want. But uh, this is going to heat up. It's at 213 right now. Once it hits 410, I'm going to throw a piece of black in there and then we're going to make this holster. And I have a homemade trim jig and I did this with the um, Aluma Light RC3, I think it was, but that's in another video. Uh, but this doesn't take in consideration the threaded barrel. It just cuts around it. Uh, so we're going to do that one or that part by hand. And uh, stay tuned. There's a reason why I didn't want to go into vac forming when I first started this business. And that reason is the amount of wasted material is atrocious. Uh, obviously, your prices need to reflect that amount of wasted material. So when you're doing a vacuum form versus when you're doing a foam press, minimum what I need on a foam press is an 8x8. Eight eight, and that's actually giving you like a half inch on each side. So a good amount. When you're doing the foam press, it's laid out flat. And you're not, you know, obviously folding over and you got to make sure that you have a frame for it. Now, the crappy part is because of the height of it, Whatever that height is, is how far off you want to go, if that makes sense to you. So if I got something that's 8x8 eight eight and it's an inch and a half long, you want at least 9.5 inches on both sides. So you're looking at like 10, 12. Um, so a lot of people do a 12x12 12 12 piece. I like to go as small as possible. There is foam you can use to do it, or you could use a membrane. Completely up to you. It doesn't really matter. But the fact is, you will waste material when you do vac forming. Almost there. Temp. Shiny side up. So you want the grain side down. It's going underneath your silicone. Put the Teflon right on top. Don't forget to start it. So in 110 seconds at 410, it's gonna come out at 370. And nine out of ten times they stay but quick pop out as you can see you can see the indentations no big deal you're not gonna see that anyway and that is it so this is gonna be uh, right-handed inside the waistband we're just gonna drill out the points that we need and then when we trim it we're gonna forget the bottom and do the trim by hand Place our homemade trim jig. Screw that baby down. Awesome. And like I said, we're not going to cut the bottom because we're going to be doing that ourselves to incorporate the uh, threaded barrel so it's covered.
And all we did there is to get this flat and square, and then we will cut this angle when we fold it so we could go ahead and have uh, the exact same on both sides. Now that this pretty lady is folded, like I said, we're going to, well, first of all, look at that. That's nice. That looks good. All right. So we are going to figure out what looks good. So probably do just bam, that right there. Looks good to me. So let's cut, cut, sand, square, and make it all good. throw this together. If you're not aware, pale horse molds are pretty epic. I'm using quarter inch, if I grab it, slotted post, and a quarter inch spacer. And these are pre-cut from knifekits.com. And this is a 0.4375 screw. And it's, it's just perfect. All right, a couple more things left to do and we'll be all set. And to finish this little guy off, it is quarter inch, quarter inch, and these are three eighths. I'm gonna go ahead get thread locker on one. The one that gets the thread locker is the one that doesn't move. And I know we cleaned this prior, but there is an FN 509 Tactical IWB holster. Hell yeah. And as always, like, subscribe, share, comment, do what you do, but always respect the hustle. Appreciate you guys.